All right, let's take a look at the answer key for the Unit 5 uh, Quadrilaterals Review. Uh, this was given in class, and you've had a chance to hopefully complete this on your own. Um, I did attach the PDF of this answer key with the Canvas post, uh, so if there's anything you need to go back and look at more, you can have that and go back and look at the PDF. Otherwise, let's uh, go through the video. Okay, on this first page, um, you need to have the words that I have written as your answers. Those are the most specific names. Uh, if you have questions about that, you can come, come find me later. As we work to the bottom, though, on these, you need to have something drawn like this. If it's an isosceles trapezoid, you need to have two angles marked congruent and two other angles marked congruent. And then we also want to say diagonals are congruent at some, somewhere on this. And you may have left that off. Just remember that for the test, that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Um, there's not a real easy way to um, show that in your picture, though. And then you have two sides marked parallel with arrows, and then the other two sides have to be marked congruent. Okay, for number 10, we're supposed to label the following information about a rectangle. And so you want four right angles. You want opposite sides parallel here and here. You want opposite sides congruent here and here. And then, again, remember that the diagonals of a rectangle are also congruent, and they bisect each other. Okay, let's take a look at the next page. For number 11, those were sometimes or always or never true statements you were supposed to uh, write down, or underline or circle the correct answer of each one, or write down the answer. So, uh, 1A is always, or sorry, 11A is always, 11B is sometimes, 11C is sometimes, D is sometimes, E is sometimes, F is always, and G is always. If you have any questions about those, come in and see me before the test. Okay, then for the proofs, remember we grade those at five points apiece. Um, I showed you how to do that in class over one of the assignments that used proofs. And to get the proof completely right, you get five points. Um, if you are missing just about a fourth of the proof, um, if you did the whole proof but you got about a fourth of it wrong, that means you got three-fourths of it right. Um, then you get four points. If you got at least half of it right, then that's three points. If you get only about a fourth of the proof right, it's one point. And if you only started with the givens, uh, I'm sorry, two points for a fourth of the proof. And if you only get the givens, it's one point. Okay, so it should look something like this. Um, I chose to use side, side, side. If you used a different method and you want to ask me about it um, before the test, go ahead and bring that to class and do that. This should be triangle CBA. And if you didn't if you wrote it in the order it was printed, that's okay. But in order for corresponding parts to match up, we have to call it triangle CBA. Uh, and same kind of thing on number 13. In order for um, corresponding parts to match up, we have to call the other triangle STA. And again, I use side, side, side on those. Okay, and so I use definitions of square and rectangle. You could have used parallelogram for this line and square for this line also. All right, so then as we go through this page, um, a lot of different things we can figure out, a lot of problem solving to do, um, but these should be your answers there. And again, if I'm going too fast in the video, you're welcome to stop at any time and pause so you can uh, copy the answers down or see my work a little bit more clearly. But again, two points per problem on this. And then when you get down to number 18, I actually did more work than was necessary on number 18. Um, we really don't have to do part B on this. I misread the problem at first, okay? All you have to do is what I've shown on part A for this problem, because it just wants to know, is it a parallelogram or not? And since we've shown that opposite sides are congruent, that makes it a parallelogram, okay? I'll even write that in. Since opposite sides are congruent, this is a parallelogram. We have a problem later on in the review that you have to do both parts. Okay, looking at number 19, these are the answers we should get, and you should have rounded somewhere close to this for AB, 20.07 or 20 or 20.1, um, something like that for AB, and we do use Pythagorean theorem here. Number 20, we get x equals 3, and you have to plug it back in to get this answer of 14. Getting this answer is not enough, you have to plug it back in to find TR. 
say. Same thing here, we get x equals 16, and we need to plug that in so we can find the angle measure of 15 degrees. Then here's the next few problems to finish out this page. Again, we use Pythagorean theorem here on number 23. And we got about 23.85 or 23.9 uh, or 24, I would even accept. So something close to that. Now, to do number 25, we had to use the Pythagorean theorem also. Um, we had to use our Pythagorean theorem and then get that answer and uh, plug it in to find what we needed. Okay, here's number 26 and 27. Again, using Pythagorean theorem again on 27. And then 28 is where we had to use both the side lengths and diagonal lengths. When you do the side lengths, they do all end up with being the same side, so it could be a rhombus or more specifically a square. But when you check the diagonal lengths, the diagonals are not congruent. Since it's not congruent diagonals, that means that it's not a rectangle, so it cannot be a square. So the most specific name we can use for ABCD is a rhombus. Okay. On 29 and 30, again using some coordinate geometry, using the slope formula for number 29. Um, this, in order for it to be a parallelogram, we will not want opposite sides to be parallel, which means they need to have the same slope. So we find the slope of BC, and that is the same slope as slope of ED, so we get two-thirds. But to find the, uh, the slope of side BE for this to be a rectangle, we want opposite reciprocal slopes. So I want that to be a right angle, so I take the opposite reciprocal of this slope, making it negative 3 over 2. Okay, 31 and 32 using some trapezoid characteristics to find these measures. And here's our final page. Again, two points per problem on really all of this uh, packet except for the two proof problems. Number 33, we should get 94 degrees. 34 should be 67 degrees. 35 should be 135 degrees. 36, we get the length of 28 when x is 2. 37, using our mid-segments, 63 needs to be the average of these two, so we add these two expressions and divide by 2, set it equal to 63. The first thing I would do is multiply both sides by 63 and get this. And then you can combine your like terms, and we get x is 10, but they want you to plug that back in up here for AB, which gives us 57. And finally, a very similar problem to this, only we have a, uh, an expression of 5x uh, plus 1 in the mid-segment length instead of just a number. Either way, we set this up like this and work through it pretty much the same way, only we have to distribute 2 times 5x plus 1 when you multiply both sides by 2. Combine like terms, solve for x, and we get x equals 3. And if I plug that back in for yz, we get a mid-segment length of 16. All right, and so when we total up all the points on here, you get a total of 82 possible points for your total score. So you write your percentage out of 82, um, and we will have that score written down, hopefully, ready to turn in the day of the test. Uh, you'll remember I, I told you in class that we are not turning in notes for this unit. Um, you need to have them with you when we start studying for the final, so I wanted you to make sure you had those with you, so I'm not collecting them this time. Again, make sure if you're stuck on any of this that you come in either in uh, before school or after school before the test, or in ACLAB before the test so you can get some extra help.